Joker, your angel of death awaits. The Joker is undoubtedly an iconic character who will be present in media for as long as there are comics, superhero animation, video games and films, which is to say he'll be here forever. But on several occasions he has actually died, and we're going to go through the list of his five best deaths. Mask of the Phantasm In Mask of the Phantasm, the Joker is portrayed as having been a goon for the mob, much different to his backstory in The Killing Joke. The Killing Joke is of course what's generally accepted to be his true origin. Now, in The Mask of the Phantasm, he's done many, many bad things, but the one thing that finally got him killed was executing the lead female protagonist's father. You? But, but he paid you! Dad? After this happened, she hunted down all the members of the mob who were responsible for killing her father. That includes him and all the ones who gave the hit in the first place. The Joker was actually the last one she attacked and he was prepared for her. He had rigged his hideout with explosives and when Batman showed up as well, he ended up triggering the explosives. He was probably planning to escape at this point, but Andrea Beaumont, the woman whose father he had killed, grabbed a hold of him and the two were buried by the building and killed, with Joker laughing his mad laugh all the while. and little did he know that he was actually robbing Batman of one of his greatest loves as well. Injustice The Joker's death in Injustice is great for one reason. It's not Batman who finally snaps and kills him. For years, fans have been saying that Batman should kill the Joker, because he always escapes from wherever he is incarcerated, no matter what. Even in the Lego Batman, he was able to escape from the Phantom Zone and come back stronger than ever. And when he does come back, he kills more people and ruins more lives. And with each escape and stunt he has done, these stunts become larger and larger in this ever-building escalade of danger and damage that he has to create. But Batman has always refused to give in and break his moral code. No matter what the Joker does to him, he would never kill him. But when Joker sets off a nuke in Metropolis, killing 5 million people, which is undoubtedly the worst thing the Joker has ever done, Batman has control, though admittedly it is measured. The nuke. Where'd you get it? What? You want one? Copy that. But it's Superman who can't handle it. Everyone thinks Batman is the Dark One who interrogates in torturous ways. Please not stop! I'll tell you, just stop! Remember something else? And it's the one who's most likely to snap. As Superman is the Boy Scout goody two-shoes. But in this, we see that Batman is actually the more morally correct of the two, as he's been able to resist giving in killing the Joker for years. But if I do that, if I allow myself to go down into that place, I'll never come back. But Superman cannot deal with someone as insane and evil as the Joker, and kills him in an instant. <laughs> now run along, so I can break out of here. I've got lots of planning to do to top this. That's enough. I know it's soon, but think you'll ever love again? Maybe you won't kill your next family. And that's what makes this such a great death, the fact that it was Superman and not Batman who broke first and took a life. It's interesting to see that Batman, the only one of the main seven Justice League members who doesn't have any powers, is the one strong enough to resist killing the Joker, whereas Superman, the strongest and most powerful being on the planet, is not strong enough to stop himself. That being said, I do completely understand why Superman killed the Joker. He killed his wife and unborn child. And I don't honestly think any man worth a damn would be able to stop themselves from killing the Joker if that had happened to them. Not straight away when the pain and the loss was still fresh, which is why Superman shouldn't have been anywhere near the Joker at that point, but they couldn't exactly keep him away. As I said, he is the most powerful being on the planet. And killing the Joker is forgivable under those circumstances, at least in my mind, and I think that any jury would have let him go on a plea of temporary insanity. But it's everything the Superman does next that's wrong, 
and the Injustice games did prove that once a life is taken, it's a slippery slope to becoming a fully fledged supervillain, which Superman definitely became in the Injustice 2 video game. I'll have a legion whose power rivals the combined Lantern Corps, and I want you to lead it with me. Never, Cal. You'll either make the right choice, or I'll make it for you. And this is actually one of the best things about the Injustice games. It does show why superheroes should never kill, even though we always say they should when we read the comics and watch the films. They have to have a line in the sand because once they cross it, they can't go back. Arkham City. In Arkham City, the Joker is dying. This is due to all the chemicals that were in his system in the first game, Arkham Asylum. In this first game, we saw him inject himself with the formula Titan, which is based on Bane's venom and transforms a person into a monstrous Bane-like state. These chemicals, combined with the cure to return Joker to normal, leave his blood poisoned and toxic, and he has hours to live as the game starts. Mr. Freeze is making a cure for the poison, but it turns out to be more complicated than simply synthesizing it. Perhaps I should elaborate. Creating an antidote to the disease that afflicts the clown was easy. Unfortunately, the cure degrades too quickly. It needs a restorative element, some kind of reforming enzyme. Without it, it breaks down before it can help its host. I've seen this before. Finding a suitable enzyme is not the only problem. It needs to be adapted, bonded to human DNA. That will take decades. Because of this, the Joker needs Batman to get him the cure, so he injects Batman with the same poison. Batman is fine with this, as he'd rather die than save him, but Joker has a backup plan. Oh, didn't I say? I've spent weeks shipping samples of my blood to emergency rooms all over the city. So Batman has to get the cure by getting Ra's al Ghul's blood and using it to synthesize the cure. Being Batman, he of course does this, but it's not that simple once the cure's synthesized. The formula is complete. The bonding process appears to have been successful. How are you feeling? You look unwell. Give it to me. I'm afraid I cannot do that, Batman. You have given me your last order. But finally, after some pretty good boss fights, Batman gets the cure and drinks enough to save himself, and has enough of it left for the Joker as well. Every decision you've ever made ends with death and misery. People die. I stop you. You'll just break out and do it again. <laughs> Think of it as a running Now this death is great because if the Joker hadn't been so vain and had trusted Batman, he would have lived. It's his own nature that leads to his death, and he dies with the laughter of that irony on his lips. Do you want to know something funny? Even after everything you've done, I would have saved you. <laughs> that actually is pretty funny. <laughs> the Dark Knight Returns Part 2. This death is amazing simply for its brutality. The movie was based on Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns graphic novel and saw Batman do the one thing fans have wanted him to do for years, kill the Joker. After all the years and the things he has done, Batman has finally decided that he needs to take down the Joker once and for all. Are you out of your mind? I'm through playing Joker. It's an incredible fight and truly worthy as an ending to their lifelong feud. And the film is great, but in all honesty, it's worth watching simply for the fight scene between Joker and Batman. <laughs> oh, that's bad. You should get that look out when you have a chance. 
After a violent and bloody confrontation through a theme park, the two end up in the Tunnel of Love, which is actually rather a fitting setting for the two since they have a deeper connection with one another than some lovers do. The Joker is badly injured in the fight and his neck is badly damaged and he knows that he is lost, but he decides that he has to have the final joke. And rather than let Batman finish it, the Joker breaks his own neck, killing himself and causing the world to believe that Batman was the one who killed him. Which then leads to the famous fight between Superman and Batman. This is just an incredible death. The final fight between the two is something you would think could never live up to our fanboy expectations, but it actually does come pretty close. It's finally here, isn't it? The moment we both dreamed about. In great part because of this ending. It shows how the Joker has no regard for human life, not even his own, and that he's prepared to go to any lengths to win in this feud between him and Batman, not even allowing Batman to have the finishing blow. Plus, that net breaking is just brutal. It's the sound they use with it, and you can actually feel it snap, and it hurts. See you in hell. <laughs> Return of the Joker. Hello, Gotham. Joker's back in town. Return of the Joker was the first true death of the Joker that I ever saw, and I will never forget watching it for the first time. The Joker has kidnapped Tim Drake in an attempt to torture and brainwash him into thinking he is his son, and it works. Say hello, JJ. The Joker invites Batman over to show him what he's done and boasts about his destruction of Tim Drake and the birth of Joker Jr. and how he has basically taken yet another Robin from Batman. But as with all things, the Joker takes it too far. He has beaten Batman and he could have ended it there, but he wants Tim Drake to be the one to kill Batman, to show that Batman has truly failed and the Joker has won. But in an incredibly emotional scene, Tim Drake is able to clear his mind enough through the torture and the chemicals that Joker has injected into him, and instead of killing Batman, he kills the Joker. That's not funny. That's not... <laughs> the Joker is once again the architect of his own demise, a common theme and a fitting one for a man like the Joker. And as you watch the Joker die, Tim Drake starts laughing the mad laugh of the Joker, which turns into tears as he is losing his mind, and the full weight of what he has done and what has been done to him hits him. It's the same moment and feeling that Batman had when his parents died, and the same feeling that the Joker had when he'd lost his family and he finally gave in to the madness. But unlike the Joker, Tim Drake is strong enough to eventually get his mind back. We had a trusted friend, Dr. Leslie Tompkins. It took her a year, but she was able to help Tim back to sanity. Still, things were never really the same. But even so, it's a heartbreaking scene to watch and incredibly moving, even in the face of how sadistic this part of the movie really is. One thing I think is important to note with these deaths is that in all of them, Batman is there. He was there when the Joker was created, and he was there when the Joker ended. And it seems fitting that he should be and they are all the Joker's own fault, the end result and comeuppance for the depraved life he has decided to lead. But what do you think of these deaths, and which is your favourite? I'd also be very interested to hear which order you would put these deaths in yourself, and which do you think is the most fitting way for the Joker to die? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to give a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to Needle Mouse Productions' Patreon page. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that's helping to raise funds so that we can produce more videos for you each week. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.